find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Breaking news of what police are referring to as a series of brutal murders. Well, there goes our quiet night. What are you doing? It's your birthday. Go out and, and celebrate. No, I'm more of a cake and cadavers kind of gal. Hey guys, it is October 21st, 2014, 14, 14, 14, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, and this is that rambling review, that rambling movie minute of that re- ramblingreview.com. Uh, I'm not Malengo, as you can tell, probably, if you're on the video, uh, well, I guess the audio, uh, but it's me, and it's Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York, joining me as well. There he Woo, is. It's the Mike and Mike movie hour. So it is the Mike. Mike, yeah, Mike it hour. is the Mike and Mike movie hour. I hope we don't go an hour, but uh, we're here. We're talking movies. Let's get right right to it. Uh, so uh, the trailer there, if you're catching us on the YouTube's, uh, was a little movie called See No Evil Two, which man, Mike, you've had a quite an experience with this afternoon. I I just finished See No Evil Two about forty minutes ago, and uh, I was a huge fan of See No Evil One. As was I. See, see, see No Evil 2 was dire- well, uh, had a new director. Um, two new directors, actually. The Sasuke sisters, uh, who are known for ve- a lot of really, really weird horror movies. Um, uh, what, the Amazing uh, Mary, I believe, is one. Um, hold on. I, ha- I have their... It's... Um, uh, <sighs> American Mary, American Mary, and uh, Dead Hooker in a Trunk. Apparently, <laughs> nice. That's that's where they were. That's a movie they were in, um, and they they also did American Mary, which is they were cast as the Demon Twins of Berlin. So yeah, uh, I... they're they're big into horror movies. Um, I actually got to see them last year at New York Comic Con. I went to the WWE movies panel. Mm-hmm. And they were there, and they were talking about what huge wrestling fans they are, because they were there with Kane, obviously, promoting that one, as was Hornswoggle, promoting Leprechaun Origins. So this has been in the works for a long time, and I gotta say, Ceno Evil 2 was infinitely better than Ceno Evil 1. Really? No, I liked I yeah. liked the first one. I was definitely entertained by the first one. Um, so, so what is it about this that makes it better than the first? Or is it just like we've turned up the gore a bit? Um, actually, the gore wasn't turned up that much. Mm-hmm. It was about the same level, which it it's a good level of gore. Mm-hmm. It's it's not like overtly bad where it's where you get really squeamish about anything. But it's, it's not a saw or a hostile kind of film. No, no. Uh, it gets the point across. Mm-hmm. It gets several points across. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just. The way it was shot, like it, it felt more professional. Okay. It felt way more professional. If um, the setting is a morgue, mm-hmm. so it's ultimately going to be a little bit more creepier than an old hotel. Uh, it it was it was the tone of it was, it seemed like they were really taking it seriously and really wanted to delve into the actual character of Jacob Goodnight, as opposed to in the first one he was kind of a mute. A mute killer and like very much like the first friday the 13th the mother was the real brains behind the whole thing spoiler alert for those who haven't seen seen a weevil one but it's a five-year-old movie so you know that's on you uh but seen a weevil too like kane actually speaks which is nice and it was unexpected and he had some good character depth to him which i rather enjoyed and Kane is just so good at being like a badass. Like they they paid homage to the first movie with a hook, but um in this one he he has like a 
It's kind of like a bone saw knife because obviously they're in a morgue, so he had a ton of tools. There's almost like um, a kid in a candy shop moment where he's opening up all the cabinets in one of the uh, obit rooms. Mm-hmm. And, oh, it, it's fun because you could just see he's looking around like, oh, what can I use? What can I use? And it, it, it was really just a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, definitely better than Leprechaun Origins. So, so, I, so, so it sounds like this was a, a pretty positive WWE film experience, and I know we've been kind of down on them. One, it's it's cool that they have one that's actually featuring one of their guys a little bit more. When we just had random films, it seems come out from the WWE film studio. Oh yeah, I'd say this is one of my like I'm I'm a I'm a weird guy who actually liked the Marine and actually liked Twelve Rounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, not so much the sequels, but uh, Kane is. Kane is really good. He's a very good actor, as you know, if you've seen him with Daniel Bryan and with the Undertaker stuff. Like, you know, he knows how to emote even when he's not doing that much. And I don't know what kind of workout he's been doing. I don't know if he's been doing DDP yoga, but he looked ripped in this. Like, he didn't look like a lumbering Jason in a forest wearing a wearing an over wearing overalls. He looked like a legitimate badass. It was just straight up going to murder people. That's awesome. Yeah. And I got to say, the supporting cast of characters, much, much more likable than uh, the first scene of Evil, than Leprechaun Origins. Some of them were some of them were overtly goofy. Some of them were very serious. And there was actually a nice little uh, B plot line going on, too. Cool, cool. So, yeah, so overall, it came out today. Um, I live tweeted from the Mayhem Show account. Uh, it's a spoiler-free, it's a spoiler-free live tweet, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. Uh, but yeah, it if you like horror movies, definitely definitely check this out. It's on demand. Uh, you can get it in you know uh, DVD stores everywhere. But yeah, it's out it's out today. I highly recommend it. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, we're having a live delivery of our uh, of our sponsor pizza today, by the way. <laughs> there uh, you go. Our friend Slice on Broadway, Fee in the in uh, studio, um, guests for the rest of the night here. So uh, shout out to them real quick. All right. Let's get into some more of the news. Oh, and, oh, so it's on DVD and digital today, right? Yes. OK, so people can snag it, they could probably get it on their Xboxes and whatnot. I believe it's on uh the xbox i'm not sure i watch it through my cable provider mm-hmm. but it's digital hd so i'm assuming that's like itunes everywhere like that so awesome awesome so let's get into the news of course uh the big news of the week the warner brothers uh, announcing officially we saw a leak of this some news leaking out of this uh, a little bit ago uh but they there was this big chart that came out uh during a shareholding shareholder meeting uh back on the 15th of october here uh a a game plan for uh uh, 2016 all the way through 2020 for uh uh mostly uh comic book based movies including lego movies of course um fantastic beasts yeah fantastic beasts and where to find them what what is fantastic beasts um fantastic beasts and where to find them is a book jk rowling did oh Um, yeah okay Uh, it's set within the Harry Potter universe. It's basically about the guy who wrote the book on magical creatures. Okay. Uh, his name is Newt Scamander, and he went to Hogwarts, I want to say it's about 80 years before the time of Harry. So it's set in the same world, like with wizards and muggles and all that stuff. But um, it's it's a different time period. It's the Roaring Twenties, I believe, is what the movie's going to be set in. And as far as I, like, from what I've heard, the first movie is going to be set in New York in the Roaring Twenties. Wow. With magic. Okay, okay, I'm looking it up. So, so well, that's cool. So another amazingly crazy, uh, so this is like, ba- this was basically their outlines for their franchises, for their, like, like, Lego movies, obviously, their DC and mm-hmm. they're, you know, obviously they're J.K. Rowling uh, franchises. Here. Yes. But but uh, of note, of course, we're talking about 2016. Uh, they're going to have, of course, Batman v. Superman or Superman v. Batman. Uh, Suicide Squad, the first of the Fantastic Beasts, and the Lego Ninjago movie. There you go. 
2017 is going to have Wonder Woman, Justice League, and the Lego Batman movie, which has been hitting the news after Comic-Con. 2018 is going to be The Flash, Aquaman, Fantastic Beasts, the second one, uh, and the Lego Movie 2 officially. 2019 was Shazam, which we know The Rock is going to be a part of that, and Justice League 2. And finally, 2020 with Cyborg, Green Lantern, and a third Fantastic Beast movie. Um, this seems like a strange roadmap, but of it's course, we don't know. It's really ambitious. It's, it's super ambitious, yeah. Um, and we've seen where Warner Brothers versions of, say, the Green Lantern has gone before. We have The Flash being announced in 2018 when we just started a TV series, which I think they've already established. This will not have any connection with the TV universe. No, the movies aren't going to have connections to any of the TV shows, which I don't agree with. I don't agree with, especially since the TV shows are the TV shows are doing so well. I mean, Flash just got picked up for a full season after its second episode. Mm -hmm. That's that's really good, and they haven't even done the crossover stuff yet. Like, because there's going to be crossover episodes between Flash and Arrow. And why they're not doing a movie, like having these guys incorporated into the movie world, I don't know. There, there, there's definitely a, a um, there's definitely a general disconnection, I think, between their TV and their movie sides. Is what we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the TV the TV shows can actually do depressing very well, but still, you know, have a nice lift at the end. Whereas opposed to the movies, uh, Superman is breaking people's necks and causing billions of dollars of damage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Just a whole different, whole different method there. Um, so it'll be and interesting. For, to... And from what I've heard, the Suicide Squad movie mm -hmm. is not even going to have Harley Quinn in it. I wouldn't expect it to. I. I don't see why there's, you can't. There's, the Suicide Squad is several. There's several, several incarnations of that. Yeah, I know, but it, but if they're pulling like they're pulling Superman stuff from the new Fifty Two, mm -hmm. they're pulling the Batman stuff. It seems from Dark Knight Rises, uh, Dark Knight Returns, but the Wonder Woman um, stuff. It seems like they're going to be pulling from New Fifty Two. Aquaman seems like they're going to be pulling from New Fifty Two. The fact that a cyborg movie is even going to exist screams new 52 yet suicide squad they're going to go back to an I, older version they, they're going to they're going to pick and choose whatever version the screenwriters feel like is what's going to happen um and we don't know do they well, have harley, a harley quinn is such a popular do, character do they have a kevin Feige that that can bring this all together no i don't think they do <laughs> uh, i mean that, that, that's what they kind of need don't they um but Either way, it's way too early to tell. I mean, we've only really started filming the first of these. How many movies? Let's say, just say, you know, for the DC Universe ones, I mean, we have 10 movies they've announced. I don't think I don't think Marvel's even come out with 10 movies yet, have they? Uh, Close-ish, I'm sure. Yeah, they're close, but I don't even think that. And the first Iron Man came out in... Like, they're around 8 or 9-ish. If you count Hulk, they're, they're, they're around 8 or 9-ish. Yeah, and this is 10 movies in four years. That, ah, uh, that doesn't seem Actually, like a I good think, plan. I think, of, I think uh, Marvel has done exactly 10 as of Guardians. Okay. That's starting in 2007. Yeah, and we're up until 2014. And, yes. And, it, like, Marvel seems like this, they have had this plan because... Uh, but DC just, they just seem like they want to get movies out. Yeah. And they're, with they're trying so to much, it. like, so many of the same people starring in the same movies. Like, within, between Batman vs. Superman, Wonder Woman, and Justice League Part 1, that's three movies with Gail Godot as Wonder Woman, and we don't even know how good she's going to be in it. I mean, yeah, I'm sure yeah. she'll do fine, but that's an awful big slate for something that isn't proven. And what all. happens when the first two movies come out and they turn into a Green Lantern with uh, Ryan Reynolds? Yep. You know, I mean, you see, you'll see Warner Brothers drop this like a bad habit. If if they if we get halfway through this plan, I'll be amazed. And supposedly Shazam isn't even going to be part of this universe. No, they're just saying they're they're just saying this is the franchise and and. 
they're just mapping out a franchise. This is like the most dedicated they've been to their DC franchises because it seems like it's so one off. Uh, we can complain the, the DC Warner brothers dealing with their DC properties in the movie universe has been a problem for years. Um, and it, with, with very few successes. Um, I mean, everything's money-making for them because it has Batman on it or whoever. Um, uh, no, no, Sork, let's be clear. It has Batman on it. <laughs> Superman returns. Didn't make money. Green Lantern didn't make money. The only movies that made money for them are Christopher Reeves and Batman. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Although I will give them credit for jumping Marvel for announcing a Wonder Woman movie. But again, well, don't know how good it's going to be. Well, at least they made money off of Blade. Because <laughs> that was a New Line Cinema, which is a Time Warner property. <sighs> yeah. 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 I'm not going to talk about Blade. I just I saw Blade Trinity recently. Oh, I can't wait for that on Panel Riot. Anyways. Oh, we got to wait for that Spider-Man 3 one to come out, too. Um, quick. I, I, I'm sad that Malenga wasn't here to talk about this one. Claudia with a Chance of Meatballs is going to have a TV series. Um, this is a DreamWorks one, right? No, this is actually Sony Pictures Animation. Yeah. Um, I Why not? You know, they're doing it with everything else. DreamWorks is doing it with everything they have. They're franchising everything with these movies. Um, I don't see a problem with it. I think it was a kind of a fun universe. Oh, yeah. No, the, the cloudy movies I saw, I didn't get to finish the second one yet because um I fell asleep on it. I was watching it late at night. But uh, there, it's a really interesting universe to be thrown into, and the graphics were amazing. Mm-hmm. Plus, I imp- I adore any movie that almost solely relies on puns especially food related puns it very it very much was it very much was yeah so the only reason i wanted to see that movie was because of the of the uh there's a leak in a boat joke (laughs) and the camera pans and there's an actual leak in the boat and it screams and runs away (laughs) that was the reason i wanted to see the movie yeah yeah they had a lot of those. Uh, no, it was fantastic. I had fun watching any of those. Um, and, in, and speaking of animation, uh, Disney has a first look at Feast, which I believe is going to be the short in front of uh, Big Hero 6. Holy crap, that comes out like next weekend, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for Big Hero 6. I'm so excited for it. I this think is, I cool. love these shorts. There was a short that was, I think, in front of Wreck-It Ralph. And I love that Disney is getting back to having, the whimsy is back in Walt Disney Animation Studios, guys. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the short that's in front of Frozen, mm-hmm. the Mickey Mouse short. I haven't. Oh, sword, you gotta find it. I need to borrow that copy from uh, the Carlins uh, of yes, Frozen, apparently. need to watch, I believe it's, is it called Inside Out? No, I'm not, I forget what it's called. I'll find it, I'll find it. it. It's the Mickey Mouse one. Oh, it's um, Buy a Cow or Ride a Cow or something like that. Yeah, it's it's something like that, but you have to see it. I think it. I remember. I think we talked about this when before Frozen came out, like on this show. Uh, finally, in the news, uh, what I had lined up here, uh, Rob Riggle. You may know him from uh, the Daily Show. He's going to play Frank West in the Dead Rising movie, the Dead Rising, a, a popular video game series. Um, a not too serious zombie mash him up. I guess you could call it. Um, I think he's kind of the perfect person for this. Um, I don't know if it's, it, Frank West. I think is the original. Dead Rising character, which was the the photojournalist. Yes. So, I, I mean, this is the game where you go in and it's kind of a playground where you get to like take, just kill zombies with whatever you can get your hands on. Um, it's, I, I hope it's like Zombieland. I just oh, that'd be like great. Zombieland. That'd be great. Uh, the movie's officially told, titled Dead Rising Watchtower. Um, it's not going to be serious at all if they're going to have Rob Riggle attached to this thing, let's be honest. Uh, he's a retired U.S. Marine and Oh, wait, he, he legitimately is a, a retired U.S. Marine, Rob Riggle, yes. actually. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, that's cool. To see, you know, hey, Capcom, not unfamiliar with zombie games and movies. So um, and the great thing is, if it doesn't make sense, like any of the Resident Evil movies, it doesn't matter because it's Dead Rising. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going there for zombie massacres. That's why you're going there. As long as you can attach a chainsaw to a hockey stick. Everything's going to be just fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. As long as they're inventive in that. Like you said, like it's, if it's a Zombieland thing, I'd like to say something like Zombieland might have been actually kind of inspired off of games like this in the long run. So, 
Awesome. It wouldn't surprise me, especially with the zombie kill of the week mm-hmm. gimmick that they had in uh, Zombie Land. This weekend, John Wick, the Keanu Reeves flick, comes out. <sighs> yeah, Keanu Reeves. I don't. What was that? Was that a, a I, love for Keanu Reeves or or? I, oh. I love Keanu Reeves. I've seen that trailer a dozen times. I've no. It's idea great. Yeah, I've been seeing it pop up a lot <laughs> on uh, on on actually Hulu, I guess. Um, looking forward to that. Also, the next board game movie since Battleship Ouija comes out. Oh, thank you, Parker. Thank you, Parker Brothers. God damn you, Clue! <laughs> I blame this all on you. If I had Tim Curry in it, I give it half a chance. Yeah. Um, and that that's Tim Curry the- should just be in all of the board game movies and have a board game movie unit. That would make it acceptable. I movie. would love to see Tim Curry in Tiddlywinks, the movie. <laughs> It all comes together in, in Monopoly, right? Uh, besides that, uh, what are we watching? I didn't see any other movies this week. I'm really just kind of catching up on that television. Caught up with some a few weeks of Simpsons here. Uh, Simpsons is is Simpsons is the Simpsons. Although their intros are getting freaking weird, man. Oh yeah, I, I love the intros. The intros are almost the reason to watch the show now. Like the second episode of the season got super weird. Where's this futuristic weird? I don't. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, <laughs> Well, Sorg, you see, they'll never stop The Simpsons. So that was just a preview of what it's going to look like in the year 20x2196.9 or percent sign. <laughs> uh, from the chat, uh, Wheels is in there and he says, uh, uh, well, that's the st- part stuff about him hitting Facebook. He watched Mrs. Brown Boy, Mrs. Brown's Boy's Son of Bad, Jay and Silent Bob's Awesome Adventure. Oh, I, th- I think that's the movie, a cartoon yeah, movie. Yeah, the super yeah. groovy, awesome movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need uh, to see that. I really need to see that one. No, so. you don't. No, I don't. No, you don't. But we I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Oh, yeah, we've discussed this. I the will. Sword, I sword, have to. I'm good. required to watch it as a fan of Kevin Smithian things. I know. That's why I watch it, too. And considering it's an anime. If one Kevin Smith property this year, make it Tusk. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not going to be the only one. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'm currently watching Comic Book Men, for instance, from last season. So. That's fair. There you go. Um, aside from that, I'm watching, uh, you know, getting caught up with Gotham and and uh, Arrow and Flash. I think everything has been on a, a good tear uh, here right out the gate. Uh, Constantine starts this Friday, I know, on NBC. Uh, so the comic book, holy crapness. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been top notch. Um, really good time. Really, really good time to be a comic book fan watching television. I almost want to just shirk off everything else. And just watch my comic book stuff. And Walking Dead, of course. Two episodes in. Holy crap. Uh, I'm, I'm still not sold on Gotham. I'm I know. still not. La- I know. Last night's, last night's episode, I, will, I know you haven't seen it yet. I will say that was better. Mm-hmm. It seems like they're pushing towards something now. Mm-hmm. But the cases that Gordon and I, I really feel like I, I think it's, it's one of those series. Um, the first season of Arrow. Anybody like I, I know I've known a couple people on Twitter that are going through Arrow right now mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Like it gets better after season one. Trust me. Yeah, oh, yeah. Even yeah, like season one about. was acceptable, but I'm like, ah, I don't know. But hey, it's a green arrow and they're getting to it. And it's still better than Smallville. Um, you know, there was a very lost element. And then by the time they got around to season two, like season two paid off everything from season one to me. Well, season one for me, once you find out what John Barrowman's role in that show is, mm-hmm. that's when it starts to pick up. But that's because I'm a sucker for John Barrowman. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but my girlfriend's actually um, plowing through Arrow now, and she's almost done with the second season. She is she can't stop. <laughs> but I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that that's what the Gotham trajectory is too. Like it's going to be a, a, a first rough couple of episodes. But it seems like they're trying to get into a a through line for the season now. And last night's episode was the best one I've seen so far. Mm-hmm. I'm still not really sold of it. Oh, Wheel said he saw Son of Batman. Ooh, the, uh, the still haven't gotten to that one yet. I still need to get get on top of that. Damn, I don't that have time for movies. One. I just don't have time for movies. I got to play 24 hours of video games this this weekend. All right, anything else that you watch you want to touch on before we get out of here? Sorg, I finished Bojack Horseman. <gasps> you finished the Bojack. Okay, what do you think? Um, it was good. It was good. It, was it, good. it definitely didn't go where you thought it was going, right? 
no, mm-hmm. no. Um, mm-hmm. it made me, it made me feel feels, mm-hmm. which was, I did not, you didn't think that. a show about half animal people would make you feel feels, but you really yeah. did get in touch with the half horse man. Uh huh. Yeah. You knew I, what it was um, like to be a Will half. Arnett, if Will Arnett would just stop doing his stupid CBS comedy and do more Bojack <laughs> Horseman, I'd be totally cool with that. Completely total with that. I, I, I don't know yeah. if they've officially gone a uh, season two announcement yet which is weird for netflix i think maybe they did actually what to expect in season two? Oh, it did renew it did renew oh, good. it's coming good it's coming oh that's amazing um looking forward to it uh i'm excited it seemed if you're paying attention to it it seems very much like an animated uh arrested development it is there's, and there's a only, lot of calls only to you're it. focusing on the the magician career of job yes actually <laughs> yeah that's about right that's about right yeah some really good stuff there awesome uh well uh with that hey uh, uh, uh oh so- oh and i oh. watched one more other thing hmm. it was terrifying sorg oh no what was it toy story of terror <laughs> oh no <laughs> no i i saw it was on um abc right yeah it was on abc and it it's fun it's a fun little half hour uh cartoon it's all the original voice actors, which was awesome. Um, they had Carl Weathers in it as a G.I. Joe type of action figure, which was great. Uh, it's If you like the Toy Story movies, if you miss seeing Toy Story movies, this is, this is kind of like what Toy Story 4 could be about because it's the same characters with the new ones introduced in Toy Story 3, so it was really good. Awesome. Oh, and the last thing I watched was I got the dvd of dragon ball z battle of gods oh yeah how was that really fun really fun it has a lot of the humor of dragon ball and a fun fight scene and a really interesting villain something that dragon ball that dbz dragon ball hasn't really done and i like it a lot because it it kind of flipped the script on the whole you know hero coming to destroy the earth gimmick that dragon ball z does all the time and they get every every big thing you want to see in there like you get to see instant transmissions you get to see kamehameha's you get to see vegeta being an angry dwarf badass you get to see shenron like they they threw everything in they threw everything in there and they actually kind of curse a little bit nice yeah but yeah, if you're if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan and you didn't get a chance to see this when it was in theaters or uh, haven't watched it on various YouTube clips that they have out of it, definitely go pick it up. They have the English dub and I believe they have Japanese dub too. If you're one of those people that like reading subtitles instead of the English voice actors, it, it, it takes it takes zombie Nazis for me to go read something. <laughs> <laughs> or Nightwatch. Nightwatch was actually really good for subtitles. Anyways, on that note, uh, you can check out stuff at uh, thatramblingreview.com, uh, including new reviews by our friend Alex in uh, in California. He was doing a uh, review on, I can't remember off the top of my head. Something scary. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll try to pull it up here. Also, hey, we're doing Extra Life. Please go over to SorgatronMedia.com. There's a uh, link over there for Extra Life. Helping St. Vincent's Hospital uh, Children's Wing uh, get them some new video games up there in Erie, PA. It sounds like they really need it. I think they have like a Super Nintendo. That, that Those poor kids um, that, are, that are stuck there with whatever illnesses uh, have to play. Uh, we'll be doing a 24-hour marathon. And uh, like I said, you can go to InsertCoinToBegin.com or SorgatronMedia.com. Click on that. Donate. Uh, help us help some sick kids. And uh, with that, check out everything else at SorgatronMedia.com. Mike's at Mad Mike 4883 You can let him know what you think about your opinions of the things he talks about. Your thoughts on BoJack Horseman, for instance. And Sorg, Alex Watch Paranormal Activities, the Mark ones. Thank you. Paranoid Activity. Paranoid Activity. There you go. Paranormal, Paranormal Activity. Um, and of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Um Check us out on the website. We got links there for Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus pages. And we'll see you guys next week. Ramble on? Is that the what we say? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Have Ramble a rambling on. weekend. Have a rambling weekend.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>